everyone. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have much demos and code, but I have <laughs> but I have GIF animations and a cute baby pic, so bear with me. Um, I work at Mapbox, and I create a thing called Leaflet. If you don't know what Leaflet is, it's a thing you use to put maps on the web, and all the awesome guys are using it. It looks like this. And, uh, okay, let's go. Uh, first announcement I'm going to make is that the next version will be 1.0. It's a really huge milestone for the Leaflet project. Uh, it's really important, and uh, it's uh, perhaps the biggest update of Leaflet since uh, the first release three and a half years ago. Uh, it supports a lot, a lot, lots and lots of changes, but maybe not the changes you would expect from a major release. But uh, so I need some time to explain uh, my thinking behind leaflet development and what I actually want to 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 do in future and how the development happens and what features I accept and what not. So uh, probably it will happen sometime next month, the release. I, I, would, I would release it earlier, but I have a three-week vacation in Turkey <laughs> after the Phosphor G and I didn't rest for a year, so I, I really deserve that. <laughs> so hopefully next month. And so uh, a bit of uh, background uh, of leaflet history. Uh, Leaflet was born against all odds. Uh, so back in, in 2008, uh, when the only uh, uh, open source mapping solution for in JavaScript was OpenLayers, um, and uh, I, I thought that you could build a really much simpler JavaScript library. Everyone told me that I shouldn't do it, that it's a worthless idea, it's crazy. Uh, like, no way I could do that. <laughs> uh, uh, that they told me that I'm wasting time. Uh, that uh, I would, that I should have been uh, spending contributing to OpenWares, and uh, instead of having this blasphemous ideas, and uh, uh, my boss at CloudMate told me that I should forget about building a, an API from scratch uh, because, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, because we need to use a stable, major, established solution. And uh, uh, I said, ah, fuck all that, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> uh, so one was born as a protest against bloat, against clutter, and against complexity. And uh, so the top priorities were, have always been and will always be simplicity and performance. Uh, and every, everything comes in the next. Right? And uh, so let's see what... what What's next for 1.0? Uh, and I should also say that it's an evolution, not revolution. So there are a lot of improvements that are maybe small, but, but they build up into something that makes the product tick. So uh, first I'm going to talk about animations and usability improvements. Uh, and the first feature that Leaflet 1.0 will finally have and it has been requested, requested lots of times for all those years as fractional zoom support. So uh, you will be able to set any, any zoom well you want, and it will just work as expected. So well, leaflets will still be optimized for integer zoom levels, but if you need this functionality, you, you can use it without any problem. And one thing that this feature enabled specifically is uh, Ballistic panning. It's a kind of optimal panning that zooms and pans at the same time, and it's really great for uh, uh, for lots of applications when you have to switch between locations or zoom to particular locations, and it makes the usability much better. Yeah, so you will have that. So let's go back to fractional zooming. Okay. So uh, next up is uh, vertile loading. So uh, up to this moment, uh, Leaflet has had a really simple way to buff buffer tiles from other zoom levels. And uh, actually, uh, it, it could save uh, uh, tiles from uh, zoom levels uh, from which you zoomed 
into another level uh, for, for, for only one level. Uh, well, it sounds complicated, but uh, well, just it just got better. Uh, too long to explain. Uh, there's less flickering of tiles now. Um, next is uh, the panning inertia is working better, uh, less buggy, and uh, more fluid. Uh, and uh, there's a really long-standing bug that uh, specifically was really useful in uh, satellite tiles applications. Uh, uh, it's uh, in Safari for Mac. There were gaps between tiles. There, that's gone now. Finally, uh, the performance of uh, Pinch Zoom on iOS Safari got uh, smoother due to some really clever uh, hardware acceleration tricks. Uh, there is now pop-up fade out animation. It pop-ups were fading in, but not fading out. It's finally happened. Uh, next is uh, vector support was basically rewritten from scratch in Leaflet 1.0, uh, and uh, it changed a lot. So the first thing is that before that, uh, Leaflet was using SVG for vectors, and uh, you could switch to Canvas implementation with some global switch, uh, but it was a kind of a half fast uh, implementation. It, it was a bit buggy and not very performant. Uh, and now Canvas support is really so solid, and you can uh, switch between SVG and Canvas uh, renders, and you can have both SVG and Canvas vectors on leaflet map at the same time. Uh, it all became much easier. Uh, you can now put vectors in custom panes. So if you have, uh, if you want to put a tile layer and then a vector layer and then a tile layer on top and then a vector layer on top, you can do that. Before that, it was a problem in leaflets. And uh, next is a really huge performance boost for SVG layers. So uh, adding vector layers got about three times faster, and it takes almost three times less memory. It's, uh, it will get immediately noticeable on, on maps with lots of vector shapes. Um, canvas layers also got really, really fast because uh, now when some layer changes, it does partial redraw instead of redrawing the whole canvas scene. And uh, the heat detection algorithm for mouse movements is also much faster. So generally, if uh, SVG layers are not cutting it for you and you have too many layers on your map, switch to canvas and it may be much faster. And canvas layers are now retina screen enabled. Uh, there were lots of problems with multi polygon and multi polyline implementations because they're kind of a hack. They were implemented as a they were inherited from feature groups, so actually uh, the implementations was uh, like just put a lot of individual polygons or individual polylines on a map and call it multi polygon or multi polyline. And now this was rewritten and uh, it solved a lot of bugs and problems people were coming up with. So uh, polyline and polygon have. Now have get center method. Uh, next uh, is Tyler code got rewritten re 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 a lot. So uh, previously in Leaflets, uh, the Tyler implementation was uh, perhaps the biggest uh, file source code. It was really huge and uh, pretty complicated. And now it's much better because Tyler class is now split into two classes: grid layer and Tyler. And grid layer handles all the, all the grid logic, and tile layer handles all the DOM images loading logic. And there was previously a class called tile layer canvas that you could use uh, to to generate tiles on the fly to do some things like fractals or any custom layers. But now it's gone for good. Now grid layer can do the same in a much better way, much more flexible. So earlier you would create a tile layer canvas class and uh, you would set up a function that would create, that would draw those tiles and 
in the new way you can create canvas uh, elements or you can create anything you want so it's much more flexible you can do any kinds of tiles webgl tiles anything uh, next is projection support in leaflets it was uh, also really uh, not, not very good because uh, i'm still really confused uh, by projections. Welcome to the well, club. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm actually clueless about GIS. I'm, like, I'm still really confused about projections. And uh, uh, so uh, I had to use some help on that. Uh, and uh, a guy who maintains uh, a leaflet plugin called Proj for Leaflets uh, that allows you to use any projections you want with leaflets. Uh, it he helped me make the, the projection code much better and it was cleaned up and previously there was there were a lots of projection hacks uh, uh, around uh, the whole throughout the whole code source code so what, like lots of hacks in the tiler implementation and lots of hacks in the vector implementation etc and now there are no hacks at all like everything is centralized and CRS implementation. So now the CRS that you choose for your map defines everything, how tiles wrap, how, what are the bounds, distance measure. And it's much easier to use uh, weird projections and projections that are not earth-based, like simple projections for games, for example. Um, and yeah, approach for leaflets, uh, this plugin also got much better because uh, uh, it's got rid of a lot of hacks that got around my hacks in, in leaflet. <laughs> so, uh, uh, some changes in how layers work. Uh, so now all layers are inherited from one base class, layer class, and uh, it's uh, allowed me to get rid of a lot of repetition, and there's more consistency now between different layer types, and uh, it's better for plugins because they they can hook up to what leaflet layers e more easily. There is now custom pane management. So uh, previously there was a set of like container elements uh, where all the all the stuff you put on the map would would get into like uh, all tile layers would get into tile layer pane. All vector layers would get into vector layer pane, and you couldn't actually customize that. Well, you could, but it was really hacky. Uh, now it's pretty easy. You can create any panes uh, and uh, like put any layers into any panes, and uh, it makes it easy to uh, like control z, z order of layers. It makes it easy to, for example, uh, hide some panes temporarily and show them and make make interactions faster. There are also some performance improvements. So uh, Laton G class construction got eight times faster and it's uh, certainly noticeable if you ever try to like take a huge data set and iterate through all the points to create Laton G uh, objects to put to convert into leaflet objects. So it, it, it's now faster. Uh, faster layer construction, so things like marker creation is, is, is just faster generally for all layers. Um, there's a huge feature group class performance boost, uh, and feature group powers classes like GeoJSON uh, due to much better event propagation mechanism. Now creating feature groups and uh, now events in feature groups work much, much faster. Um, Memory footprint of leaflet got much better because I spent quite some time optimizing uh, how it uh, handles events, leaflet events, and DOM events. So it should take less memory. And uh, removing listeners got two times faster too. And there are lots of other bug fixes and improvements. So as you can see, there are no, no like, uh, seminal huge features, but I actually really try to avoid adding new features, and I'm more likely to, to remove code than to add it. And so uh, that that's, uh, makes, makes it hard to accept a lot of pull requests, because if, if I accepted all the pull requests that are coming, that's, then Leaflet would quickly turn into a monster. 
so, and best of all, so you heard about all the improvements, and uh, how much do you think the, the leaflet code size grew? Uh, it actually got smaller. <laughs> hey, let's clap that up. <laughs> yeah, so uh, not, uh, maybe there are not so many features, but the internals got rewritten really heavily, so the code is much simpler and better organized, it's easier to understand, it's easier to contribute to, and it's, it's smaller. Like you can see the stats here between the latest stable version and the master version. And uh, a couple words, uh, people have been asking, uh, like why does it take so long? Uh, the latest uh, big uh, leaflet release, one, uh, 0 0.7, was uh, at the end of the last year. So it's almost a year, and 1.0 is still not released. So why, why so long? So um, there are four reasons that I'm going to list. Uh, the first reason is that it's really hard to concentrate when you have uh, war going on in your country. Uh, the second reason is that it's really even more hard to concentrate when you are a father of twin girls. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, uh, yesterday. No, <laughs> two days ago it was taken. It's oh, will we be selling Madbox onesies? <laughs> uh, yeah, you can buy one. Uh, Dude, yeah, awesome. <laughs> Mapbox stores open. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, they're three months old, and uh, yeah, life has been crazy. Uh, third reason is that Leaflet is already so good; <laughs> people are really happy with it, and uh, they're not complaining as much as they as they were before. So, <laughs> less motivation. Uh, and so the fourth reason is. Magbox, GLJS, and our beautiful Lauren will talk more about it today, so stay tuned. Uh, but uh, I've been working on Magbox, GLJS a lot, as you can see, half thousand uh, minutes over the year. Uh, and uh, I must also comment on, like, a lot of people, uh, when they heard about Magbox, GLJS announcements, uh, they were impressed, but they thought, um, but like, what does it mean for leaflet? Is it going obsolete? Obsolete? Uh, will I stop developing leaflet if I work so much in my box GLGS and uh, like things like that? And the answer to all these questions is no. Uh, and this is why uh, Mavox GLGS is a incredibly complex technology. Yeah, so much thought has been put into it, and so much research, both on server side and client side. It has tons of code, tons of bits and pieces that fit together. It's really, really complex, and it uh, really doesn't fit the leaflet philosophy because leaflet, on the other hand, is something that's the epitome of simplicity. So there will always be a place for two libraries. Uh, Mavbox GLGS is currently created to experiment, blow minds, and create amazing app interactions, but Leaflet will remain the go-to library for a long and long time. Uh, because it's that simple, it's easy to use, it works on all platforms, mobile, desktop, any platforms. Uh, it has tons of plugins, more than 100. Uh, it has a huge community, everyone knows it, everyone uses it, so it, it isn't going anywhere, and I'm gonna continue developing it pretty actively. And uh, also Leaflet and Mavbox GL benefit from each other, because I work on both projects, and uh, a lot of experience I got from developing Leaflet, I'm putting into Mavbox GL. And a lot of Mavbox GL uh, experiments uh, and ideas I get from developing Mavbox GL will be reflected in future Leaflet releases too. And there is also a Leaflet project. <laughs> so you can hook up Mavbox GL, JS, and Leaflet. And I think uh, I'm going to open source the repo sometime today or maybe tomorrow if I'm in a good mood. 
<laughs> okay, so I think that's it for today, and so uh, thank you. Yeah, Vlad was too nice to mention it, but the price has not changed, has it? <laughs> Wave Foot 1.0 will be the same rock bottom price we come to expect. Um, I'm going to do the first question just because it's one of those questions that I think this audience can help think through in terms of Canvas versus SDG mm -hmm. and kind of basic rules of thumb of if I have these many features, I can render them with SDG. If I have, if I need more features, do I go with Canvas? How do you think about like the sheer volume of features and whether to use Canvas or SVG? Uh, well, uh, I think you always need to uh, try both and uh, see what works better. But the general rule of thumb is that for uh, lesser amount of features uh, and less points uh, in a feature, uh, SVG works better, interactions works uh, uh, more smoothly, and uh, Canvas layer. Uh, handles uh, a bigger amount of features that it may have some like uh, visual artifacts or it may not work as as perfectly as the SVG flare. But you always need to switch between the two and and see if you have a lot if you have a lot of flares you need to try both. And it's it's now easier in the for one panel. Great. Uh, questions from the audience don't be shy. <laughs> Yeah. Multiple projections on the same map? Yes, no, go to that. All right, um, I'll, I'll, I'll repeat. <laughs> Multiple projections on the same map. No, yes, good idea, bad idea. <laughs> Take it away. Well, uh, I'm actually not sure uh, because uh, I'm yet to find a good use case for this, but uh, uh, I think some people have, uh, have done this, but maybe it's not as obvious and, uh, as you could expect. So, but uh, maybe I, I will look into this in the future. It's definitely not obvious. <laughs> one, one use for that is when you have all these hot services around from the National Bird Watchers uh, Association of Antarctica who wants or who provides that in Arctic for their projection. Uh, yeah, but can, can I show this on my map? And you have people coming to you, oh, yeah, the, the, the problem with different projections in the same map is that they don't generally align. And that's uh, not a simple problem, so we need to, to solve this somehow. But yeah, I don't, I don't have a definite answer to this so right so now. So for, for a leap, that, that would be always one projection <coughs> or one. Oh. Kind of <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Well, what we do is actually we have three maps, we just turn them on all repeat Okay. Huh. Yeah to, that, yeah, to that end, um, quick story, there is a very, very large U.S. government agency that shall be named nameless who is redoing their mapping portion. And so when they did the requirements of the new contractors, they're like, okay, web map, web mercator. And of course, somebody from the government agency says, we're going to need Albers, too, because we do technical measurements using our web map. And the idea of one of the great one of the great de facto standards that has accelerated web mapping has been web mercator. No matter how you feel about it from a purist projection point, uh, it's made everyone's life easier. So projections is one of those capabilities that it's it's a double edged sword. And if you're in the business of building maps, like me personally I'm not going to tell my clients they can do projections. Like it's taken them eight years to get on board with the single de facto standard we have. Any questions from the back? Back, standing there. Down front? Yeah. So, the, we'll take, we'll get you a second. 3.9, Yeah, no, good. Yeah. Uh, so, when talking about projections, my understanding is we're going to be able to do non mercator tiles, or is it going to be sort of just other things that project on the map? Uh, no, it means other, uh, uh, like any tiles. 
of any directions, especially with the frost for leaflets. And uh, uh, well, it actually already works in, uh, in leaflet stable, but it's not uh, as easy. And there are some hacks you need to do, but. Uh, you got that on your laptop? Yeah. All right, well, we might make you get up here before lunch. <laughs> Since projection seems to be the hot topic here, JSG. Yeah. Does he sound like, like, in a, like, D3? Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, question back? Uh, yeah, it wasn't really a technical question. But since we have the creator of Leaflet in front of us, I thought I'd ask about the origin of the name. Yeah, the origin of the name of Leaflet, the etymology. Uh, so, um, I knew that uh, I wanted to build uh, a library that's really lightweight and simple, and uh, I wanted to come up with a name that uh, reflected like, the, the lightness and the simplicity, and maybe had something to do with, uh, like, a piece of paper or, or something that you can put a map on. And uh, it naturally come up leaflets, and I think uh, it was it wasn't taken among other <laughs> JavaScript libraries because now you like any name you can t you can come up with like any name is is a JavaScript library. Like if you come up with a name communist, uh, it is a JavaScript library. Uh, any other name is, is a JavaScript library nowadays. So it's. <laughs> You have a bright future as a brand strategist. <laughs> uh, we have uh, time for two more questions. Anyone? Right down here in front. What do you think the stability of the plugin ecosystem will be at 1.0? Uh, yes, so, like many of the plugins will have to be uh, updated, but uh, I think that's a good way to like filter out plugins that are still supported and plugins that are have long been for forgotten. And uh, plugins is an area I want to focus more in, on, like uh, do more quality control, uh, make a better listing of plugins. That's where you actually see like how many GitHub stars does it have? Uh, is it uh, compatible with the latest version? And uh, things like this. So I, I really want to, to spend more on this. But I think, yeah, people will have to, to, to update their code in, in many, Occasions, but uh, it's uh, it's worth it. Yeah, one of the themes throughout FOS 4G is always community management. How do you encourage people to participate, and yet how do you maintain kind of a base level, and how do you move forward with change necessary changes and manage that whole process? And it's a it's a challenge no matter what your project is. One more question, last one, doing the honors. Great. Well, let's give Steve in the back. What do you, this is a chance to get you on the spot. What do you think is some of the new big things that are coming in JS and GL? Like, so you've been working on the WebGL stuff. That we saw that last year at this event. That was kind of the beginnings of that. Yeah. What do you think? Forget WebGL. WebGL is now old school. Everybody here knows it. What's new? <laughs> new hotness? Is it web animation? Is it what is? It? Uh. <laughs> Hard question. Uh, what do you mean? Yes, he does. He's like an expert in the field. I want to hear what he thinks. He's, he's held to. Um, um, I think uh, it's not as much as about like new uh, technology. It, it, it's about making uh, things that are are already possible. Much easier to implement. So things that you needed to, like, if you needed to spend a year developing some really great application with the development of current development of browser technologies, you can spend a month instead of a year because uh, of all the new APIs. So, like, there were polyfills for that, and uh, you you could get around like uh, a lot of things. But now it gets easier. So, and so this is going to enable uh, a lot of things, like people will get more creative, people will generally get, get more creative when, when it's much easier to do things that were hard previously. Great. Well, that's all, all the time we have for the pod. Let's give them a big round of applause.